Hi everyone, I'm Michelle with the Sleep Coach School and welcome to another Talking Insomnia session. So today I am joined by Nadia and Nadia went through our Insomnia Immunity Program and I also had the chance to work with her a little bit one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm really excited that you're here today. So first off, just welcome and thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me today. Um, I've been so excited to share my story. It's been I don't know, I've always felt like I wasn't ready, um, but just going through, you know, a few speed bumps, um, I feel like I'm finally, like I had the click moment, you know, and I feel like I really am excited to share it. Amazing. Well, I know a lot of your story and that's why I'm really looking forward to, you know, having the opportunity to, to help share that with everybody else. So let's dive right in. Um, Nadia, I'd love to ask you, for everybody out there listening, a little bit more about your insomnia story and if you could share with us how did it all start and sort of what did it look like for you when this started um yeah i was going through a really stressful time kind of like like most people um yeah. in the group have said uh and just weird symptoms started to show up for me um like you know i had like a stuffy nose and then i'm like researching it to death and then you know i thought i had GERD because i was getting a sore throat and all this stuff and and, you know, I went to a couple specialists, even this is over the course of a couple months. And they're like, you know, you're OK. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, then why is my stomach hurt so bad or chest pain and all this? And somebody mentioned, well, maybe you're stressed. I'm like, really stress? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, OK, I'm going to test this theory and I'm going to take some Xanax and see if, you know, it actually helps. And, you know, it did. I took the Xanax a couple nights and I'm like, wow, my stomach pain is gone. Everything's gone. So it was a very um much revelation mm -hmm. but so then i was like okay well i can just stop taking the xanax and i'll be fine now i had been taking it for probably a couple of weeks at that point i'm like i'll just stop taking it my troubles are gone uh, little did i know that they were kind of just beginning so um i just stopped taking it and then i couldn't sleep obviously most people would be like that's obvious it's you know something you have to wean off of but it just took like two nights of no sleep and I just, I just started freaking out. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. And when did, when was all this starting? When did this happen? Um, for a year. Well, the year was um, 2019, like around like the summer. Mm, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then very common what you're saying, right? All of us have a story or around something that kind of sparked this initial experience of not sleeping and how much that kind of jolted us. So that makes a lot of sense. And for you, what was what was really the most challenging part of experiencing your insomnia? Um, yeah, I went I went downhill really fast. After that, you know, everybody talks about like just trying to find the solutions, answers to what it is and just, you know, feeding the cycle. Um, I had never experienced anxiety um, like that, that before to the where it's like causing you mania and you're just like out of your mind. Um, that was definitely really bad. Um, mm -hmm. But the worst part I think was probably feeling like so detached from reality. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like my heart was constantly racing and the nausea was bad. It was just so horrible not to be able to eat. Um, it's pretty much like every, every joy in life I had was gone. <laughs> I can understand that. And at the time, because you mentioned this nausea and feeling detached from reality, so a little bit of derealization, did you associate that at the time with, with symptoms of anxiety or was it more just a lot of confusion, sort of like, what is going on? Why am I experiencing? Yeah, I knew it was anxiety, but I didn't know like how to fix it at all or like what I should do to try to fix it because I even tried like um, going to a therapist, but they didn't. They didn't understand what the root was, you know, they're trying all these things on me with magnets and, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. So. Yeah. And that leads into my next question, right? What are, what are some of the things that you actually tried before finding the sleep coach school and working with us? What were some of the things that you ended up trying to sort of, you know, get rid of the insomnia? Oh, wow. This started off, um, I checked myself into a rehab place. <laughs> Oh, um, I thought maybe I thought that maybe I was withdrawing from Xanax, even though I was on like such a low dose for a couple of weeks, you know, mm -hmm. but at this point, I'm just like desperate for anything. You know, I check in there and 
and and they said, oh, well, we'll help you. You know, you're not an addict, but we'll help you find some medication that you can sleep on, you know, and I didn't, uh, it, it didn't quite work out that way. I ended up with, you know, just in general population there with, you know, probably P PTSD from like, that experience. And, you know, I realized that they were probably just, you know, collecting an insurance check for me. So I got out of there and and then things got a bit worse. I was like, okay, fine, I'm gonna go to the hospital because it had been more nights I couldn't sleep at all and I'm just struggling and um, I thought I'm gonna die. And I go in, I go in there and tell them, you know, I, you know I'm, I, I might be on suicide watch. You just need to help me. You need to get me to go to sleep somehow. So they, they took me to like the mental ward <laughs> part and they like put me, they gave me medication that actually put me down which was like an antipsychotic. Um, so that was, that was nice. But then I was like, all right, I'm not going to read about this drug because I'm not going to find out what the, you know, what the side effects are of it. Cause that's just going to make me more, you know, worse. And then I accidentally did that. <laughs> so yeah, it's this cycle of like, I'm taking this to feel better, but then it's going to cause this, which just, it just adds a lot more anxiety into the mix. The pull of Google searching is so strong. It's impossible not to do. And is this while you're still staying at the hospital or they had sent you home? I was home at this point. I was even doing better for a couple months thinking, oh, this is my magic pill. This is going to help me. You know, it was a total placebo effect. And, you know, that, as you know, is another struggle on its own. So, yeah. so after that, um, I went to a sleep clinic. <laughs> And they sent yeah. me to it. <laughs> Everything you're saying, like, yes, yes, you know, absolutely. Go on, yeah. I went to, they sent me to a CBTI training, okay. and it was just a room full of people kind of staring at these projector slides. Um, it's all the same stuff you read online about sleep hygiene, except it costs a lot more. <laughs> and um, that did nothing for me. I, the whole idea of getting out of bed when you can't sleep, that's ridiculous. For one thing, I'm going to wake my partner. I'm not going to make him go through this with me, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, it just seems so counterintuitive. So it didn't, it didn't work on me. Um, and then for the next point I'll bring up is meditation. And that is actually something I found on my own. That was like a major turning point in my struggle. Um, like learning that you're not your own thoughts. That's, that's huge. Uh, you can't, um, like you can't control your thoughts and you shouldn't try to, that was a big thing. And then that you can actually control your emotions. So that was cool. Yeah, that's amazing. And you sort of stumbled on on meditation and just learning the concept that, oh, wait a minute, I'm not my own thoughts. Kind of around that time, a CBTI maybe wasn't working and you were still struggling quite a bit. So was it helpful at the time, like when you first learned, just that uh, kind of that one part about how we, I'm not my own thoughts. Was that kind of a turning point for you a little bit? Absolutely. Like you kind of think of yourself as this blob you are everything you think you're, you're, you're this solidified being, but I mean, you're totally separate from those things. And once I started to see that, you know, you can control your emotions around something, then that actually gave me the feeling that I had some control. <laughs> um, but I wasn't quite there yet <laughs> because I was still using it as kind of a, I was, I think I was still using meditation as a, um, like a sleep effort. Yeah. And I did that as well. I remember talking to you a little bit about this when you were in the program. I fell into that that trap as well because I was, um, you know, I'm, I'm also a part time yoga teacher and I meditate. And at the time during my insomnia, I thought, OK, I'm just going to meditate myself out of this. Right. If I just can just meditate hard enough and long enough, then I <laughs> get rid of this problem. And and the tricky part is and you may have had this experience is, you know, a couple of times after, let's say you may have had a, a long meditation session, maybe you will sleep better and you'll go, this is the answer, this is it. And so it will kind of reinforce all of that. And it's so easy to fall into that sort of like meditation or almost like well, broader wellness sleep effort trap, right? Because these aren't bad things, right? These are wonderful things. And so it can be confusing when we're using them in that that particular way. So yeah, I, I also <laughs> The meditation trap route. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we understand. 
So yes, after all of this, and of course, unfortunately, not getting the, the kind of help or support that you're really looking for, how did you how did you stumble on the sleep coach school? I will tell you that I had seen it before mm. in my initial struggle, um, but I went on there and saw that it was like CBTI stuff, and I'm like, no, 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 I can't do this anymore. <laughs> and so, and but that was also around the time when Daniel he hadn't really gotten to NATO yet, I don't think so. And maybe the resources just weren't there yet. Um, it was like really early 2020 by this point. But um, so I stumbled on this user on Reddit um, named Ryan, uh, you slash sleep anxiety. And um, his stuff was about meditation. He's kind of, I started DMing him a little bit and he's kind of got me into that a bit. Um, but then after, like I said, the I was still struggling a lot even though I was meditating. I contacted him again and I was like, hey, I'm still struggling a lot. Do you have any advice? And he's like, well, you should check out Daniel's channel again. And I was like, okay. So I started doing that and then I read Nato and um, that was like a huge first, you know, maybe like the second big one for me because it's the first time that I, someone understood like actually what I was, <clears throat> what I was going through. Yeah. And, um, it wasn't like some people that kind of knew in a few forum posts, but this was like, he, he had it exactly. It's the hyper arousal was right. like pretty much the key. Yeah. Right. Right. Which leads me into the next question I wanted to ask, which as you know, from going through the program and working with us is that our teachings are, are very much centered around mindfulness and acceptance and even some, you know, ACT style principles. What was it that really resonated with you about about some of these teachings as you were maybe stumbling on NATO for the first time or you know entering the program? Or did it resonate right away or did it take a little bit of time? What was that like for you? Um, I think it was right away. Uh, just knowing that there was nothing wrong with me specifically, um, that it was a normal thing that my brain was doing to try to protect me. As soon as I learned that, I was like, I was like, yeah, <laughs> this makes sense. Um, and then also like that this is curable. It's not like something that I'll be troubled with forever. Right. Was it helpful knowing that you were not alone, that there were so many other people going through the exact same thing? Because I think so often when we're in this position, we feel very isolated and like we're the only ones and we might be going to see doctors or practitioners that are completely baffled by this experience. And so that reinforces yeah. Right? How isolated. Exactly. Oh, this is a professional. They've never seen this before. You, exactly. You're definitely going to die. Terribly unique, and this, no one's ever heard of this. So, exactly. Yeah. So I'm glad you had that moment of, of seeing, like, oh, wait, it's not just me, essentially. Yeah. And it's kind of like the people, like on Reddit or other forums, it, there's a lot of questions. But with this community, it's like there's answers, you know? So, that's yeah. a different thing. Like, I could read someone's story and they're, they're really sad and terrified and then there's like no comments it's just like completely oh, no. weird. And it's like i'm that's what like i'm saying that's what reddit yeah or another forum is like but you know i got into this channel and this coaching program and you know the slack channel it's just if you have something to say there's going to be a coach that jumps on it right away and helps you and that's that's really where, where it was really valuable to me amazing well, as you know, we try not to put too much emphasis on sleep, as strange as that sounds. But of course, I've got to ask, how are you sleeping now? How are things? I will say that I'm sleeping normally now. I don't like to say good or bad because it, that's not even a thing anymore. It's kind of like it is what it is, you know, like you can, I don't know, like you can, you can read the theory, but you still need to practice. Um, that's another thing. Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, Um, if you're afraid of a speed bump coming, you're definitely not done yet. Um, I think that was something else. Um, yeah. I got to the point where I was like kind of excited about a speed bump, um, because that was like an opportunity to learn more. <laughs> I remember, I remember you were kind of, you know, in the, you know, in the category of like, I wish I could have this really big speed bump. And I don't know if you recall that, um, at, you know, probably towards the beginning of your time in the program, you were actually sleeping really well, really, really well. And you were like, man, I'm really kind of frustrated because I'd love to have 
I'd love to have the speed bump so that I can experience <laughs> this and like go through this. And <laughs> I am yeah, sleeping yeah. so well because I can't have this this experience. And uh, I remember I remember that. And you were like, I know it's a bit of a weird problem to have, but I'm sleeping pretty well right now. Yeah, <laughs> wanting the speed bump, you'll never get it. But then there are moments <laughs> when That's you know how it is. That's the trick right there. <laughs> We're teetering on it. And then, but then I would just be like, you know, they say that outside your comfort zone is where the magic happens. So that's kind of, it's like bring it on kind of thing. Yeah. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> I think, yeah, that, the idea of, yeah, the moment, the, the more, the more willing you are to experience it, which you were at the time, you're actually wanting it, right? Sometimes the less likely it's actually going to happen. And that can be hard to, it can be hard to be willing to experience such discomfort and, you know, sometimes emotional pain, but at the same time, the more willing we are, the the easier those moments will be and the less likely maybe they even show up. So it's a bit of a, it's one of those paradoxes that we find in in the sleep and the insomnia space. But um, I, I yeah. definitely remember that from your time in the program. It's just your frustration of how well you were actually sleeping at that time waiting for kind of the, the big one or to have this, this speed bump, which of course did come. Yeah, it's a thing, you know, I'm like kind of anxious for them now because I know that there's like a big window there. If I have still something to learn, which I'm sure maybe I do, then I can learn it in that space. So yeah, for sure. it doesn't matter that if it's like on vacation <laughs> or not. <laughs> Exactly. Always the worst times, but and and approaching speed bumps, just like you said, with viewing them as as these learning opportunities and opportunities to sort of reinforce safety and to move through the recovery process is so important. And you always had that mindset about speed bumps, which really, from an outside person looking in, I think was always very helpful for your process. Um, and so I know that as you're moving through all of this and we see it all the time within the program and within one-on-one -on -one coaching with the teachings is oftentimes at first, our starting point with a lot of these concepts is, is starting to learn and have a bit more of an almost intellectual understanding of, of, of these teachings. And at some point, we start to internalize them a little bit more, meaning we go from just that thinking and understanding on a mental level to maybe feeling that more or going, oh, okay, kind of I've had this experience with this and now I understand a bit on a deeper level. And sometimes people will refer to that as, you know, the, it just clicked. I'm using kind of air quotes, right? It's something just clicked and I got, I got it now, or I really understand it now, right? As opposed to before, I, I, I understood it on some level, but it didn't really resonate with me deeply. So I'm always curious, and I love to ask people the question, sort of, what was that process like for you? Did you have a moment where things clicked, or was it, you know, was it slow and gradual? And what did you think kind of helped with that process for you to kind of just internalize a lot of these teachings that that we teach at the sleep course school. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel that like your, your body has to catch up to what your mind knows. Mm -hmm. Um, for me personally, I was still like holding, like what kept me back was like, um, I was holding on to the fact that I could still take medication, you know, if I started to panic. So I had like this little thing next to my bed. Um, and, it would be like, you know, I would just reach for the pill if I, if I needed it or something like that. But what would happen is like, if I would take that, I could sleep of course, but the next day I would just be full of anxiety. Like, oh no, what if the pill doesn't work? And that was the crutch that was kind of keeping me back, you know, like, um, sorry, pause for a second. Okay, no worries. Take your time. Um, and a lot of us have have something, whether it's a, a sleep aid, maybe even it's part of a routine that we're doing, something that we're really attached to that is really, really hard to let go. And we might even know, well, this isn't even helping me very much anymore, or maybe I don't want to be doing this anymore. But we become very, um, you know, very mentally attached, right? We all have our, our version of a safety blanket. So it sounds like maybe that, that was your version at the time. And that can be, that's hard for sure. Yeah, um, this last time, this last speed bump that I had um, was kind of like the big one because, like the big one in a good way, because um, 
it's the first time I was like, I'm going to be totally okay with whatever the night has in store. I don't need to take anything. I'm going to like see what this masked man is, you know, that I've been trying to get away from this whole time. And the interesting thing is, is that it's actually not that scary. Um, if I went the whole night without sleeping, the, the next day is like, it's a little tired, but I realized that I don't have that anxiety anymore about, will this pill not work? Because I never took it. So I was like, well, okay, the anxiety is down. Um, and then of course, when your anxiety is down, you can sleep a little better. And it's almost like your positive feedback loop turned into like a negative one where yeah. you have a little less anxiety, you sleep a little better, a little less, and then pretty soon it's just gone. Exactly, that moment of sort of facing the fear of not taking you know, the pill in the middle of the night or whatever it might be, right? And we think oftentimes whatever we, the, the, the fear that we kind of conjure in our imagination is worse than what is actually happening or what will actually happen. So did you find that was the case for you as well when it came Absolutely. to the moment? Yeah. Yeah. When, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's always the case. Our mind is always so powerful. And that's why it is, it's really hard to face these fears that we have, whether it's about insomnia and anxiety or anything else. It's, it's often about what our mind is telling us about what can happen if we face this particular fear and how dangerous that could be. And so then it starts to sort of you know, send us all these these signals or symptoms, and then we yeah. go, oh, "Gosh, this is really dangerous, right?" And whereas right. when we actually face the fear, when we start doing that more regularly, I'm not saying it's easy, of course, by any means, but it's almost never, you know, as scary or as bad as we think it's going to be, just because of how powerful our imagination and our mind is when it yeah. comes to this stuff. Very it's powerful. kind of like. Like he talks about your amygdala and how that is, you know, your, it's kind of like your old dumb brain. It's kind of like, I always yeah. think of it like an old drunkard man who's like, of course it has to be a man, but <laughs> it's like, he's trying to talk to you with slurred words at night saying, oh, this is going to happen to you. And then you're, you're like trying to argue with this person. You're wasting all this energy trying to argue with this person. Like you would never do that in real life. You yeah. would just say, okay, I'm going to smile and nod at everything you're saying. <laughs> just kind of right. exactly. try to get yourself through it, you know. Exactly. Right. We're arguing with the, with that voice or we believe that voice right off the bat and we think it's true. And it's, you know, I think it's kind of, it can be very comforting to realize, oh, wait a minute. You know, I don't need to listen to this. Yeah. You know, this isn't, this isn't a reflection of the truth or reality or anything I need to particularly take some action on, I can just kind of keep going. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, that can be very, very <laughs> helpful, which goes back to the idea that you brought up in the very beginning, actually, which is this concept of we are not the voice in our minds, right? We're not that sort of chatty voice that we all have in our heads. We're actually the one of being able to observe that chatty voice and sort of coming back to that idea because it, it can sound a little bit like a simple principle, but it's actually really, it's powerful and when you're in the moment being able to kind of put that into practice. Yeah. And one of the books was like, I think it was the most recent book. It's, it's like, this is just an automation, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is your body just giving you this automatic, you know, um, spitball response and you don't have to read into it. Yeah, especially when our brains are in that scared place, right? We're activated, our brain is on high alert, it thinks that danger is happening. So the types of thoughts that are going to be generated at that point are, are going to be very fear-based. And it's very helpful at that point to realize, okay, these are just thoughts, right? This isn't me. So absolutely. So based on kind of everything you've shared and the journey that you've had, do you have any guidance for people out there? So let's say somebody is watching this video, they're brand, maybe they're brand new to the channel, they're right in the middle of, of you know, having insomnia for a while, or maybe they're even in the early stages of their insomnia recovery process. Do you have sort of any guidance that you could give them? Yeah, you know, I would say, um, don't be afraid to struggle. Um, I would also say like, you're really Ooh. lucky that you found this program <laughs> versus having to really no source of truth at all. Um, that for me, I wish I would have found it sooner for sure. Um, 
and then you know there's the feeling of well what if you know i'm the only person that this program doesn't work for i always used to say that but you know it's it's true you just need you need time and a little bit of patience to let your body catch up you know to what you're learning um so that's a big one and then probably like my motto now which is like sleep is a nice to have it's not required <laughs> if it was we would be forced to do it our body would force us so that's kind of just rest anyway yeah and it takes the pressure off right as opposed to okay we need to have perfect sleep every night which is i think sometimes when we've had insomnia for a little while we can almost get into that type of thinking um that that is sort of the goal to come back into this perfect you know, state of sleep. I know I fell into that at some point, and then you realize when you look back, you think, well, I never had that before, right? There are natural ups and downs, and just anything we can do to take the pressure off is always going to be helpful. So, yeah, absolutely. And sort of along the same lines, if you could go back and sort of picture yourself really when you were maybe at the worst part of your struggle, what would you say to that version of yourself now, now that you're, you're on the other side? Um, probably just to have patience, but but not blind patience. Like have patience, but read Daniel's books too, because <laughs> you can find yourself being in bad behaviors if you're if you're not at least you know getting the right knowledge related yeah. to it. Yeah, absolutely. And so before we wrap up for today, I have one final question for you, and you know, oftentimes when people are talking about their insomnia recovery journey, at some point, usually towards the end of the journey, sometimes people will identify, you know, certain, certain gifts or certain silver linings from the experience of going through insomnia recovery. And I think partly that can be because this journey is a very, um, you know, you're turning inwards, essentially, throughout the process. And so I love to ask people, was this the case for you? Did you find that, you know, maybe it was an unexpected uh, self-discovery experience or anything of that nature? Were there any silver linings or gifts that it left you with? Oh, definitely. I'm getting goosebumps at this question because, you know, I have a new empath empathy for people who have mental health issues. Before I used to be like this, I was completely unaware of the places and the depths your mind can take you. And uh, I, wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't take that lightly anymore. Um, I also put up like a post on Reddit to try to give back a little because of, you know, the help I received and I have like the details of my journey on there in the insomnia forum and just, you know, pointing to things that helped me. One of them, a big one being Daniel's program. Um, so I get DMs regularly from people who are struggling and it really helps too to just, just to feel it, you know, with them a little bit and just, just tell them first off that it does get better. <laughs> And that's so helpful. And I, I know that you've told me about how much you want to give back. And I agree. I think going through experiences like this can really actually make us more compassionate and empathetic towards others who are struggling in a similar way. Whereas before we may not have, you know, been connected in the same way. So I think that's, you know, really beautiful when that can happen. Absolutely. Yeah. And I also want to thank you personally, because I know you and I have talked and just knowing that you're there for me, you know, when if ever I end up in some kind of slump, which is very rare these days, but just having that is just like a huge um, weight off my shoulders as well. So well, thank, thank you. you so much. That's so kind of you to say, and I'm just, I, I have felt and feel very honored to have been able to be part of your recovery um, process. So it was, you know, lovely being able to work with you. And again, just such an honor and always keep in touch. Uh, that's always, you know, goal and always love to hear that you're doing well. So I want to thank you again for joining me today so that you could share your story with everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you and Daniel. <laughs> of course. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, that's it for today, everyone. And we will see you next time. Take care.